Today on DITV News, new diplomatic relations open up between North and South Korea. And later we show you what it takes to lie down and work with the dogs. We have all you need to know about one of the hottest teams in baseball coming into Iowa City. And I'll tell you how the Hawkeyes need to be able to break their 20 game win streak. All that more coming up in sports. Sunny skies, warm temperatures, it's looking good. Find out more in weather. All that and more coming up on this Friday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere. DITV News starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Susanna Kloster. And I'm Becca Skadden. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea's Kim Jong-un has agreed with the Republic of Korea's President Moon Jae-in to resolve for peace in the Korean Peninsula by the end of 2018. This will bring to an official end the Korean War started in 1950. In a summit, the two leaders have also agreed to denuclearize the two Koreas. In addition, Moon entered South Korea holding hands with Moon, making him the first North Korean leader to step foot in South Korea. Broward County, uh, Florida prosecutors are now planning to seek the death penalty for Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz. Cruz is part of a short list of mass shooting suspects who face their victims in court. The fate of Cruz sentencing is currently divided in the Parkland community. Some prefer a life in prison sentencing, while others support a move for capital punishment. The University of Iowa released results from its 2017 Speak Out Iowa survey Thursday. The survey helps influence the university's anti-violence plan, which is now in its second release. University President Bruce Harold told the Daily Iowan, quote, Last year it helped, but I think this year we'll really start relying on the information in this report. For more on the Speak Out survey and the University of Iowa's anti-violence plan, check out the front page of the Daily Iowan on Stands Now. On Thursday, it was hard to find a building that didn't have a yellow ribbon and bow on it. These tags were placed there to highlight the impact of philanthropy on the university campus. If a building had a bow, that means that, there was, that was because of generous donors and volunteers. Yesterday, Phil, representatives of the UI Center of Advancement, took over the Pentecrest. They encouraged students to write postcards thanking donors, and of course, Herky the Hawk also made an appearance. Phil's day helps to show students that the campus around them would not be possible without donations. It's important that students know um, the importance of philanthropy because it really impacts everything here at the University of Iowa and we're able to do so much more because of support um, through donations and generosity. Phil's Day also included a special Life with Phil talk. It featured Athletico founder and CEO Mark Kaufman who shared his philanthropic journey with the public. And Susanna, we only have two weeks of classes left here. Yeah, and the weather is looking great. The Pentecrest is looking more like a beach lately. <laughs> That's right. Let's toss over to John in the weather studio, who's going to give us more on the weather for this week. John? Thanks, guys. As the final week before Dead Week comes to a close, I am happy to say that spring is here, and I can confidently say that it's here to stay. Honestly, for a while there, I wasn't sure spring was ever actually going to come, but thankfully, I was wrong. The warmest temperature of the past week came in at a blistering 76 degrees, and the average temperature was 60 degrees. Now, enough of the past, let's take a look at today's forecast. This afternoon, there will be a high temperature of 71 degrees with mostly sunny skies. Also, I have some good news for those of you planning on going out tonight. Tonight will bring clear skies with a low temperature of 40 degrees. I mean, I was going to stay in tonight and study for finals coming up, but I don't know. I feel like I might be going out now. Anyways, let's take a look at the upcoming forecast. Tomorrow cools down a tiny bit, but nothing to worry about too much. Tomorrow brings sunny skies with an afternoon high temperature of 58 degrees and at night a low temperature of 35 degrees. On Sunday we get a repeat of sunny skies with an afternoon high temperature in the mid 60s and at night low temperatures in the upper 40s. On Monday you'll experience partly cloudy skies with afternoon high temperatures in the mid 70s and overnight lows in the upper 50s. Morning thunderstorms on Tuesday with afternoon highs in the mid 70s and overnight lows in the upper 50s. Finally, on Wednesday, expect rain with afternoon high temperatures in the mid-70s and at night lows in the mid-50s. Well, I have absolutely nothing to complain about with this upcoming forecast. I don't remember the last time that a weekend was this nice here in Iowa City. My advice to you is to take advantage of it, but again, I wouldn't worry about it too much because this is what the rest of the year will look like. That's all I have. Guys, back to you. Thanks, John. The ICAC Animal Adoption Center hosted a training session for new volunteers. Reporter Lauren Varell has more. The ICAC Animal Adoption Center hosted a training session for new volunteers. 
Volunteers work in all areas of the center by providing customer service to visitors and socialization and training for the animals. Training began with a general overview of volunteer expectations and rules and progressed into learning about the dogs. Volunteers learned new concepts and terms about the dogs, such as the shake-off, how dogs say time out. Um, and they will play, and when somebody plays a little too rough, whoever is kind of getting the short end of the stick will stop, will do a shake-off, and that's her way of saying time out. Next, volunteers learn the different signs of stress that a dog could show and how to respond to the behavior. One includes high anxiety. High anxiety is when a dog will begin jumping up and down repetitively against walls or a cage door. Volunteers were told to turn their back and show no attention when this occurs, allowing the dog to calm down and learn good behavior. The class is to teach them safety around dogs but it's also to give our dogs a chance to learn good behavior. Good. All new volunteers start at level one, which is giving treats and petting the dogs, as well as harnessing and cleaning the kennels. At training, volunteers were taught how to properly enter and exit the kennel and properly harness the dog. If you're interested in volunteering, please visit icanimalshelter.org to schedule a volunteer orientation. I chose to volunteer because I love animals, of course, and. I want to make sure that, that these animals have fun, happy families. And Reporting from the Iowa City Animal Care and Adoption Center, this is Lauren Varell, DI TV News. This year's Flyover Fest brings to town rap icon Cupcake. And performing alongside her tonight, drag performer King Montage is here at DI TV News. Good morning, King. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. That's great. <laughs> for those of you who don't know who is, Cupca who is Cupcake and why is she a big thing for Iowa City? Well, Cupcake is a body positive, sex positive rapper from Chicago who really specializes in kind of this confident, you know, sexy type of a woman, but also someone who is honest in their music and really shares their struggles. And I'm so happy that she's coming to our city because she's really blowing up on the scene, so. Yeah, that's so awesome to see someone like that coming here. And so I heard you'll be performing alongside Cupcake with the House of Eden. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about the House of Eden? What makes it the perfect pairing to go with Cupcake? Well, the House of Eden is a drag group that started about a year ago. And we kind of specialize in highlighting underrepresented communities in our performances. You know, we mesh um, hard dance choreographies with politics and make sure we highlight the Latinx community, the black community, and even the Asian community with our like K-pop nights and shows that we do all across Iowa as well as in other states as well. So paired with Cupcake is just a bunch of empowerment ready to hit the stage. So I'm so ready for tonight. All right, King. Well, thanks so much for being here with us today. Have a great time tonight. Thank the House you. of Eden will be performing tonight alongside Cupcake at Gabe's in Iowa City. The show starts at 1030. In non-tenure track Non-tenure track professors at the University of Iowa were displeased with the outcome of a Wednesday meeting following demands for better pay and benefits. These faculty members are assembling under the motto, Faculty Forward. The University Associate Provost of Faculty with whom the meeting was held claimed the event was an information gathering session furthering, further upsetting the non-unionized group. The group wants a 15% raise in a meeting where Provost Curry and President Harold are in attendance. These demands come after the State of Iowa Senate approved a $5.6 million budget cut to the University of Iowa. Well, Susanna, not a great night for Hawkeye football with the NFL draft yesterday. Yeah, but thankfully we have uh, baseball coming up, so let's toss it over to Mary Kate and Zach in the sports studio. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we have a huge weekend coming up in baseball, but first, NFL draft last night, not how anyone thought it was going to go for Josh Jackson and James Daniels. No, everyone was thinking maybe there was going to be two for the first time yeah. in some time, but that didn't quite happen. It's going to be a day, I think, where we'll see a lot of Iowa Iowa football names coming up across the screen in today's uh, NFL draft portion. No, I was happy because Baker went first, Josh Allen went seventh. That's all I needed. Not that I don't care about Josh. You two guys. <laughs> all right, well, back to Iowa baseball. They went one and two against Minnesota and then had a good midweek game on Wednesday against a team that can really hit the ball but pitching was great as well. Yeah, they got out hit in that game, actually, and it yeah. was the pitching that ended up keeping them in it. They took advantage of the free bases, took advantage of the errors that were given uh, from Milwaukee. So it ended up being a uh, pretty good midweek game because Iowa got that early lead. Gave them a chance to be able to get some new guys in different positions. Towards the back end of those uh, last couple of innings, a, a nice opportunity to see guys kind of move around with a huge weekend coming up. Well, here's what Coach Heller and the players had to say on their midweek game. 
really pleased with tonight. Um, we knew coming in that Milwaukee can swing the bats, and uh, in a midweek situation, you know that's always a concern getting into a slugfest with with your young pitchers. And you know they 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 started out hot, found a couple holes, uh, got a couple runs right, right away, and then uh, it was good to see Trenton work through that. And then uh, to answer right back and get two runs tight back up and then score, I think, in what, the next four or five innings, um, was really pleased with how uh, we were able to take advantage of the, the walks and the errors that they gave us in those few innings, and that was good to see. It's definitely big to come out and put up this many runs against a team that can really swing it. Uh, our pitchers did a great job, and I think it built a lot of confidence for the weekend. Uh, we needed this because we've been practicing a lot, and we finally got some good weather. We are fortunate enough to get some good weather today, and there was a good team, so we know like they're pretty similar to Michigan. We're going to bring the same energy we brought today. Now, the starting pitching staff has been very strong this season. A little refresher, you have Nick Allgaier as the Friday starter, Brady Chenuel as the Saturday guy, and Cole McDonald on Sunday. What have you seen from these guys, and how much have they grown this season? Well, they've grown even from where they started, but they've started really good. A yeah. lot of quality starts out of those starting spots, especially on, on Friday and Sunday. Those two have done a real nice job, Cole and, uh, Cole and Nick. But again, they've been able to keep Iowa in a lot of games when the offense hasn't been able to provide. The defense has been strong. It's kept the run total down, and those guys have been able to go long innings and really save the bullpen on the back end mm -hmm. in weekend contests. All right, well, we move into the big weekend. Iowa welcomes in the Michigan Wolverines, who are currently on a 20-game win streak, 24-11 overall, 11-0 in the Big Ten. They haven't really played anyone, kind of like how Iowa's opening run was tough. Michigan has six players hitting 300 or better. Jonathan Engelman leads the team in hits, runs, and RBIs. The pitching staff has 297 strikeouts against 138 walks. But Zach, how crazy is this? Their last loss, March 14th. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. They have really strung it together. But like you said, mm -hmm. the talent hasn't quite been there. They played four of the bottom teams of the Big Ten who probably aren't even going to be making the conference tournament when it comes around that time. So they haven't had a whole lot of, of pressure against them. There's one publication that has them ranked in the top 25. But for the most part, most of them aren't going to have them in that top 25 because of the fact that they haven't been proven. They haven't played those top opponents with the top RPI. So this is going to be a huge weekend for them and a huge weekend for Iowa to be able to solidify themselves uh, with an at-large bid maybe. Well, here's what the Hawkeyes have to say on trying to break the Wolverines' win streak. Uh, we, uh, we know they're on a pretty good win streak, and we kind of we love that. Like We love playing for these type of moments, and they got to come see us. they got to come to Iowa City. Well, I mean, I think all of us have a respect for, for that streak too because, you know, no matter – no matter what, I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. I mean, it's just tough to do in baseball, as you guys know. I mean, some days you play good like we did on Friday and you still still don't win because the ball doesn't go your way or whatever. But uh, to be on that kind of a roll, um, you know, is pretty special. But I know our guys are looking forward to, not, I mean, not just Michigan, but just being at home and hopefully having a chance to play in front of a good crowd. And, and, and I think our guys sense that, um, you know, we're, we're in a pretty good spot with confidence and playing good defense, and the starting pitching's been pretty good. The back end bullpen guys have been doing a good job. So I think we all feel like, um, you know, we're really up for that challenge and looking forward to it. Well, Zach, we had a great run. Thanks for joining me throughout the whole year with football, basketball, and baseball. For my last time in the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio, I'm Mary Kate Harian. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Mary Kate. Each Friday, we're here at DITV News, are proud to bring in the ICAC Animal of the Week. This is reserved for that one special animal at the Animal Care and Adoption Center who is ready to meet their new family. This week we brought in a newcomer to the Adoption Center, a precious pitbull mix, Rocket Dog. Rocket Dog is about six years old and she's the spitting image of a pitbull. However, as a mix, Rocket Dog is just a bit smaller than a purebred pitbull. Families looking to adopt Rocket Dog should know that she has a few allergies and requires medicine. Rocket Dog is the perfect family pet. She would be right at home with younger children, and she should be happy to share a home with most other dogs and cats. For more information on Rocket Dog and all of her other friends at the Iowa City Animal Shelter, you can visit ICAC Animal website or call their phone number or stop by to find your next furry friend. And that's a wrap on this Friday morning edition of DITV News. Uh, be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. Thanks for watching and have a great day, Iowa City.